We're entering a new era and everything is changing, the way we work, the way we live, and so is the way people grow businesses. We're entering an era where brands can grow extremely fast. So look, if you click this video, it's because you wanna grow and scale your clothing brand. I'm gonna show you the numbers and break down the percentages of where the sales came from, what the actual business model and strategy is, and how you can set up this exact system in as little as one week. And no, you don't need to spend thousands of dollars on ads. One of the most powerful ways to grow a business to get customers who love your product to tell other people about your brand it's one of the reasons we have a client of ours who's been with us for close to 10 years now who really puts out anything and generates a large amount of revenue with usually on average a 10x return because of the brand because they've cut through the noise because they found a way to just completely resonate with their audience and they were true to the word they're authentic they are super hyper focused on serving their audience and they happen to have a great product. I think as a byproduct, you should have a byproduct being a good product. That's an assumption that if you're watching this, that you have a good product. I don't think that we should talk about that too much because this video isn't gonna add much value to you if you don't already have a great product. I think you already believe in that, but let's dive into that a little bit more. I believe healthy businesses should have several ways that they can make money. So let's get into the numbers here. I really wanna break down this 500,000 here as well. So this is January of 2024. It doesn't matter when you're watching this video because it's still relevant today. The same strategies will apply and the same principles do apply as well. Organic, where did we generate the most amount of money? Organic and social. So this is a combination of organic posting and then other social sites, but mostly it came from Instagram and mostly came from TikTok organic. The social side of things could be affiliates. We have a little bit of that in here as well. I don't think that there's too much in here that's like looks, it's like a review site. There is, I think that's really it. So the organic and social is kind of interesting the way that it breaks down. And for those who do not know, these are actual numbers. This is actually from TripWell. TripWell pulls directly into Shopify. It's a way that you can see the attribution of your business and really like where the numbers are coming from. And so, that's really, I guess, the, the main thing here that we wanna go off of. So you could pull up Facebook Ads Manager and I could show you a bunch of better numbers. Like for example, Google Ads said we had an 11, we actually had a 26. Facebook said we had a 3.49 return on ad spend, we actually had a three. And for those who are wondering like, why didn't you get a 10X on Facebook? Well, as you're spending more money, the pool actually gets a little bit smaller. For us, if we get a 1.3, 1.4X return on ad spend, we're actually profitable here. So we're more than profitable. Our Total new customer acquisition was $35 to acquire a new customer. We spent $41,000 to make this uh, amount of money. Obviously a little bit more than 500,000. I and mean, we're kind of factoring a couple of other things in here too. So that's why I broke it down and made it a little bit like nicer number here. So biggest thing, we have a couple of Shopify emails that, that made some money. We've actually turned off most of the Shopify does a good job with a couple of things, but email uh, for the most part was done through Clavia. We generate $128,000 from emails with Clavio. What was our setup? Very simple. We sent out three emails per week. We have SMS tied to this as well. We also have Attentive that generated $69,000 because they locked us into a contract. I would not suggest Attentive, although it did make us money. They're very frustrating people to work with. Just my full transparency. Another part here is Google. We didn't spend much here. This is a lot of branded search. People are already looking for the brand and we did some cold as well. But again, the biggest thing here is that lowest cost per acquisition on a paid traffic fund our source and then we spent about 2800 bucks could we have spent more probably something that we're gonna evaluate for this next month and then Facebook ads we spent thirty six thousand uh, dollars generated hundred and ten all of it at a profit so Super uh, excited for that. Facebook ads have been ebbs and flow. I'm sure you've seen that plenty of things online, right? It's like amazing one day, it drops the next, there's Advantage Plus, there's DCT, there's all those other things, which we'll talk about it here in a little bit. But basically the Facebook ad strategy did well. We also, like I said, did Clavio, organic, um, attentive. The excluded part for Triple Well is just like, they can't determine where the sales actually came from. And so I don't really count that too much. Could be a combination and you'll see, you know, with a lot of things where somebody came from email, then they actually purchased on Google or they came from Facebook, went to Google, then went to email, then went to SMS and they actually made a purchase. So some of it can get lost here. So for the most part, we're pretty accurate. You know, 300 purchases, it's a good amount. But when you're talking about 7,000, that's a good chunk of purchases as well. 
and then direct people who actually went directly to the site and made a purchase there without any type of marketing it wasn't attributed 12,000 shop app if you guys are familiar with Shopify definitely get that we're making some money off of that $10,000 a month is not nothing to sneeze about even if you made a thousand off of it super cool to see people searching in the shop app it's discoverable um, as well why Clavio is listed on here twice, I honestly don't know. Got to probably dive a little to that. I think it's just a categorical thing. TikTok hasn't ever really been the best for us as far as ads. We are, I wouldn't say necessarily profitable. We didn't spend too much there. Definitely not as profitable as Google. Something that we're testing out here. But mostly the brand is, they're doing a lot of brain and stuff on Instagram and it really doesn't translate to authenticity over on TikTok. So kind of working with them on that. We're, we're getting to be profitable, but in all transparency, it's a very low budget for us and it's something that we're testing out a lot of other brands do that we work with do a lot better on TikTok. however it's a good reach platform meaning people find us on TikTok and they actually then get retargeted on facebook and instagram and so it does work out for us but again it's a very small budget we're spending like 100 bucks or so a day so i would not necessarily go all in on TikTok on our brand unless you have already been doing really well organically and for this brand we've you know we've got three to five thousand followers on TikTok organic so it's not anything major it will be a focus this year though so I'll just continue to follow along as we continue to update how we're doing with organic but like I said I wanted to um, be fully transparent you can see there's a little bit of overlap between Facebook and Google but I wanted to be fully transparent like this is the real numbers this is the real percentage breakdown because I believe a real business has multiple ways that they've generated income is it it isn't just off organic it isn't just Facebook it isn't just email it isn't just anything else I also think there was it wasn't in here but we didn't generate like three to five thousand dollars off of affiliates um, for whatever reason maybe that's part of the excluded it just wasn't really tracked that well but there was three to five thousand attributed to affiliates and ambassadors as well setting up the right business model is not hard but most people cut corners and actually miss the details that make them successful so how easy is this business model to implement the business model that we're talking about here it works because it, it's a beginner strategy but let me share with you why most people never grow their clothing brand they focus on drop shipping or 3PL, which is a third party logistic company that fulfills their orders for them. To make a clothing brand work, people actually have to want to buy your clothes and going the drop shipping route, you spend tons of time on the business, but you've never proven that someone actually wants to buy your product. Some people make these models work. You see them on the internet. I see them all the time. So they do exist, or maybe they're fake, I don't know. But for the most part, almost all of them never make enough money to actually build a business and take it full time sustainably. So we actually have a, a program member of ours who's from Taiwan and he started his business. It's a drop shipping company. It's a boutique. He is a guy starting a boutique, women's boutique drop shipping company. Kind of talked through the business model and we try to understand a little bit more about what he's doing, but ultimately came down to like, can we prove that people actually want to buy these clothes and can we validate the business model? Can we validate the product, right? The first thing you need to do is validate your actual product. And one thing that I would say that he had struggled with for a couple of months before he did this was he didn't know his audience well enough. He didn't know how to sell to them. He didn't know why they were looking to buy. The products looked good. I think most of you guys probably have great looking products, but if you don't have a way to resonate with an audience on why they should buy that mass desire, that reason that they're actually making the purchase, then you'll never actually understand it. Even if you spend a ton of money, you may be able to get some ads to work, but they probably are not going to be profitable. And you sure as heck are not going to get somebody to come back and buy again, because if you didn't treat them well and you don't know what they actually want, what they're looking for in a brand, then it's not going to work. You need to validate that product. Buy samples, a limited quantity from the market if you're a boutique, but get products in the hand and then sell those products. I've seen that if a product cannot be sold in person, it will be very difficult to do online. Now, some of you guys may say, well, I can't sell my product in person. I don't feel comfortable doing that. Find somebody else, train them, whatever it is. But you should, in, in, in a market situation, if people are up, coming up to you, you should be able to sell something. This step takes very little time to do, but keeps you from wasting a lot of your money trying to figure out why people don't like your products. At the end of the day, if you do not have a good product, and I'm assuming that you do, but if you do not have a good product and you cannot sell to somebody, then find something new, find a new product, find a new solution. Solution. You could do a pop-up, you could go to the mall, you could go to a vendor fair, etc. Look for something in your city or small town to get strangers to buy from you. I promise you it will change everything. And once you've done this, 
you'll not only have the confidence to sell your products, we'll have an idea of what products you can also sell online. Because if you sell, if you start with two or three different items and one of them does really, really well, guess what? That one's probably gonna do well online too. The way that people buy online is different, but that doesn't mean that the people are different who are buying online. Three things you must figure out to make this work online for the long term. Your audience, repeat customers, and paid traffic. If you can do that, you can grow this brand. I just wanna say that if you're a clothing brand owner and want to jump into the specifics of your brand and how to grow up profitably online, you can schedule a free 45 minute strategy session with us. There are limited spots, so go find a time now that works best for you. You can check out the link in the description down below. So I remember when we first created this strategy and we built it off of business principles. We thought it was going to have to change over time or adjust a little bit, and it has to some degree but for the most part this is the exact strategy that we have done and we have used for years and at this point has generated well over hundred million dollars in clothing brand sales in 67 different countries across the world and I'm sure some of you guys have watched our videos before and you may have added to that as far as total revenue this is what I've been able to accumulate and count towards that but we know at minimum hundred million dollars and at minimum 67 different countries so from whatever country if we've ever helped you in the video just comment down below it'd be cool to, to see if we helped another country that's not there but my point is that this works right so we need to validate the product we need to understand our audience we need to understand the messaging we need to understand the five pillars put gasoline on that fire all right so we talked about validating that product in that design and what you were selling and then the audience so i've talked about this before but not a ton and again i've asked this before but if you guys are interested more in the messaging and understanding how to figure out who your customer is you can just comment the word messaging down below and i will know what you mean there and that kind of co coincides sides really with your audience but two things I want you to make sure that you do number one go after high profit margins 60 70 percent margins go after high quality products at the beginning it's called the Tesla model which means that like when when Elon was selling something he went after like the the roadsters the more expensive stuff that nobody could explore because those sales actually allowed him to mass produce the the Model Y or all of the other ones that every normal person can buy, but it wasn't able to be funded going to the masses. It had to go to the higher end. So go after an audience with high profit margins, 60, 70%. If you have 80 or more, like awesome. I want you to have really good profit margins. Do not sell a crappy product with high margins though, okay? I want you to have a high quality product. So let's validate the product. The next thing, and that's what's good about selling it in person is that people are like, hey, this hoodie, it's this crew neck, this feels good, this is soft. This is a high quality material or man this is this is paper like this is horrible so validate the product the audience when you understand that audience and you have the margins and you go after a micro niche i always talk about and I, I use it a lot as my example right as a as a christian based texas clothing brand and being able to stock to that very specific audience if you have a very specific audience they're going after and then you have high profit margins and then you understand the messaging which we're getting ready to talk about, guess what, you're going to make money. Because every single other person, and I'm guessing you before this video, probably had no clue. Probably were like, well, I just I created a cool design, or I bought these dresses because they were at market and other people did too, and I'm reselling them, or I'm doing drop shipping, and it's, I don't understand why it's not working. It's because the other pieces, right? You actually have to build a business, which I know is crazy to people, because the internet is so powerful, but like, you still have to create a business that still helps and solves a problem. And so to kind of recap the messaging here in the audience is you have a struggling avatar, you have a customer who has a problem, you have to provide a unique solution to that problem, and then you must give them the result afterwards. You see a bunch of this before and after, or like a us versus them. Now, the us assumes that they've ever heard of you, the them assumes that they've heard of the them, but before and after, it's like my life before wearing this clothing brand or finding this boutique, sad, depressed, not happy, single, whatever. Like, I don't wanna go down the rabbit hole of like single being not happy or whatever. But my point, you get my point, versus I am now afterwards happy, married, better career, all of these things. And so we have to realize and meet people where they're at, right? What is their problem? Why is this our solution? And then what is their life afterwards? And when you can use that messaging, you understand your audience and you have high profit margins, now you can just bolt on our five pillar approach, right? Our Ecom Accelerator. And this is where I would grab some notes if I were you. The Ecom Accelerator is built off five business principles that have been tested. You need to have a high converting site. We suggest Shopify. If you're on something else, that's fine. But we really suggest Shopify just because of the data and it's an e-commerce machine just built right out of the box. Number two is traffic. I always tell people to do organic and paid. 
start with TikTok and Instagram uh, organic, and then paid, I would use the meta library, like the meta suite rather. The third one, ad profit. We love Klaviyo. You can use Postscript. There's a ton of out there. Like I said earlier, I don't really care for a ton of either way, but ad profit. What this business is doing, we're using a retention. So for every dollar we spend, we're making about six. We're also looking into postcards with Postpilot. We are also looking on the customer experience. Every single box is a high quality box, a super car, like high quality cardboard. It's not just something else. Everything has a ribbon. We try to do a handwritten note, like really focus on that customer experience. We're also using influencers. We're also using UGC and we are also doing a little bit of, uh, of SEO. So that's all the customer experience side of things. Fast shipping, um, usually same day or next day. Packaging, like I mentioned, and then uh, the biggest thing is customer service. And the last piece is organic and branding. This is the pillar that most people try to jump to first, which doesn't make any sense because you've got to sell products before you build a brand. So organic, posting stories, telling stories, one-on-one -on -one conversations, use the broadcast tool inside of Instagram, have one-on-one -on -one conversations with your customers step-by-step, -step, exactly what you need to do. We've had a lot of hand-to-hand -hand combat. We got DMs every single day, multiple times throughout the day, and just talking to customers one by one. Really doing the unscalable, that's important. That's how you generate these types of numbers. And then I would say UGC, if you do an affiliate program, an ambassador funnel, check out Social Snowball. And then honestly, all of this is kind of packaged together with like the gasoline, the, the fire that is needed to scale this brand. And we mentioned it a little bit, right? Which is Facebook ads, Instagram ads, TikTok, all of those things. Those are the, that's the gasoline to the fire here. We've already built the business principles, the business model. So you've already seen, okay, we generated that revenue. We need to create this business model. Now we need to be able to understand how to run Facebook ads. And that's what you should go do next. Go watch this video on exactly how to run Facebook ads for your clothing brand next. All right, if you guys have any questions at all, just let me know. We'll see you in the next video. And P.S., make sure you subscribe.